course, a big story was the resignation of the Prime Minister Yukio Hatoyama yesterday. And now it looks like Nato Khan is being tipped as a front runner to become Japan's next Prime Minister. He's currently the Finance Minister and also the Deputy Prime Minister. And Mike Fern has been following this uh, leadership race from Tokyo. And uh, here we have the Wrath of Khan. Mike, what else do we know about him? Well, he's the only person who's uh, put his name forward so far for the leadership race. He's 63, co-founding the Democratic Party with Yukio Hatoyama. He's already led it uh, from 2002 to 2004, and he had to resign uh, after being accused of not paying his pension contributions. Now he's going to have another crack at the top job. I told the Prime Minister Hatoyama I'd like to announce my candidacy for the party leadership on Friday. Khan entered Parliament 30 years ago and as an eco-campaigner, he kept his radical roots, exposing a tainted blood scandal while health minister in the 90s. He continues to fight bureaucracy and wasteful spending. He tried to set fiscal reform targets. He's calling for higher consumption tax. He's also criticized the Bank of Japan, saying it needs to do more to fight falling prices. He became finance minister in January, and at that time, he sent the yen plunging, both saying he'd like to see it weak, and Hatoyama laid it turned around and said ministers shouldn't talk about currencies. But uh, the yen down the most in three weeks in the past 24 hours on concern that he might do it again. He might come out with similar comments to even weaken the currency. Uh, some strategists, though, do see him as a positive for Japanese investments. Khan has occupied a very senior post in the current administration. And um, to my knowledge, he uh, hasn't made uh, many mistakes. So, um, so I don't think there's any reason to downgrade Japan's prospects for that leadership change. He's not the people's choice, though, according to the Nikkei newspaper. Seiji Maihara, the transport minister, 27% of respondents liked him, 22% for Naoto Kan, and Katsuya Okada, the foreign affairs minister, 18% going for him. And uh, when asked if they could pick anyone to run the country, doesn't have to be DPJ, uh, they actually went for the head of your party, Yoshimi Watanabe. It's called your party, not your party, Susan. Also, uh, the <laughs> LDP's Shinjiro Koizumi, Koizumi's son. Yeah. Uh, is a, a pick for Prime Minister from the punters. But they don't get to vote in the leadership race on Friday. In fact, grassroots DPJ probably don't get to vote in that, which means that Ozawa's mm. friends get to pick Ozawa's boy Nato Kan, probably. Ah, uh, okay. Still the kingmaker, I see then, Micah. Now, quickly, we have Nato Kan with, a, I would say, an interesting nickname of sorts in Japan. Yeah, they call him Irakan, Ira, Ira, irritable, uh, Mr. Grumpy, basically. Hatoyama was called Uchujin, which meant space alien. And in fact, yesterday, he said in his teary uh, farewell speech, I know a lot of you call me space alien. I don't know whether he was upset <laughs> about that. He was, he was leaving because he was fed up with the nicknames. But uh, Irakan, Mr. Grumpy, because he tends to shout at bureaucrats. I wonder where you guys come up with that stuff. Okay, Mike, thanks to that. Mike Fern in Tokyo. Now, wondering if Hatayama's resignation will be good or bad for the markets. Well, here's what the analysts are thinking. We have ING and AM, AMP Capital saying that Japan's political instability is hurting the appeal of Japanese equities. In fact, the ING is gradually reducing its exposure to Japan. AMP, meantime, says that while valuations are looking attractive, it's actually still waiting for improvements in the economy and also the political landscape. Meantime, we had a former Deutsche vice chairman in Japan, Ryoji Musha, speaking out as well. He predicted the global stock rally last year, and he says that Hatayama's resignation is very positive for stocks. And he says Hatayama's replacement is likely to strengthen ties with the U.S., which will help Japan strengthen its position in the global economy. Meantime, we have the Nikkei 225 dropping around 9% since the end of August, and that's when Hatayama, by the way, took office.